Hello there and welcome to a video tutorial series on how to make an endless runner game in Unity 6 for mobile devices. This video tutorial series will guide you through everything you need to know to use Unity 6 and make a game and I'll even provide you with all the scripts and the assets for free in every video if we use any. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial upload. Feel free to leave a comment and drop a like. The game we'll be building will be designed for mobile platforms but can easily be built for PC and other platforms too. So who is this tutorial series for? Well it's going to be for newcomers who want to create an endless runner for a mobile device and people who are new to the game development world maybe have just picked up Unity 6 and are looking to get started with it and see if it's the right engine for you. I will take you from a beginner level to an intermediate level by the end of this tutorial series. As you probably guessed, we'll be using version 6 of Unity, but this series will work in any version of Unity from the last 10 years or so. Some things may be labelled differently, but all of my tutorial series are built to be future-proof as well as legacy-proof. So this first tutorial, we'll explore how to get Unity on your PC, we'll explore the hub, we'll get acquainted with the engine interface, and we'll start inserting game objects into the game. So first and foremost, how do we get Unity as an engine? Well, easy. Go to Unity. Dot com. Click on products and then click on engine and this will take you to a button that says download unity and this will be to download the unity hub. So you download it for your platform of choice. In my case it would be Windows. Once that's installed you will end up with something that looks at least a bit similar to this. This is the unity hub and the two things that are most important to you in the unity hub is the projects tab and the installs tab. We want to go to the installs tab first and foremost. This is where we can install a version of Unity to use as an engine. And as you can see, I have a couple of different versions installed. And as I said, I'll be using Unity 6, specifically Unity 6.2 in this series, but you can use any version if you want to. To install the actual interface for Unity, click on install editor up here. And then you'll see here under official releases, you'll see Unity 6.2 supported and recommended and then you'll see Unity 6 at least for me is LTS. Other versions also have this LTS tag and that means long-term support and what that effectively means is that Unity Technologies will support that engine for quite some time. As you can see 2021 is still being supported so it's up to you what version you want to use but I would recommend using Unity 6 or 6.2. All you need to do then is click on install and once you do that you will see a list of platforms that you can build for. Now this isn't an exhaustive list, there are more platforms that you can build for, I will explain later in this video. But for now you click on the platforms you want to build your game for, so whether it's Android or whether it is iOS or whether you do just want to build for Windows, make sure you select at least these options here. If you want to build for Linux or uh, Mac build support, you can do that. Next, you click on continue. And what that will do is it will take a while, but it will install all of the platforms and the engine as well as Visual Studio. Once that's done, click on projects and then click on new project. Here, you'll be able to select the editor version. So if you have multiple engines installed, you'll be able to select from the list here. So select 6.2 and from there make sure we select universal 3d this will work with any version of 3d so you could theoretically if you wanted to use the high definition 3d or you could use 3d mobile it doesn't really matter too much but using the universal 3d means that we're going to use the urp which is the universal render pipeline and what that means is that because it's universal, pretty much anything we do is going to work in here. It's worth noting some uh, render pipelines do behave a bit differently in Unity. But as we're doing a beginner thing here, we'll stick with the universal 3D. Next, if you are connected to the internet, you'll be able to select your organization here. In other words, your account. You can add your project name here. So you could put something like endless runner and from there you choose your location so save it wherever you want to you could use version control if you want to there's no point uh, at this stage uh, after that once you've selected those click on 
create project just down here. Again, it will take a couple of minutes to put it together, but once it's done, you should have something that looks like this. This is the default Unity layout. And we'll go through the things that we need to know about at this point. I won't go through everything because there are some things in here that we just won't touch whilst building this mobile endless runner. Let's start with the hierarchy. The hierarchy is a place where you can store game objects in text form, as you can see right here. So we have a main camera, we have a directional light and a global volume. And you'll notice as we do this that they do get selected in this place right here. And this is the scene view. What is the scene view? This is the visual representation of where your game objects are. So for example, we click on main camera. This is where our camera currently is. So if we double click on the hierarchy, it will focus on whatever object we've just clicked on. Now we can use our mouse in the scene view to zoom in and zoom out. And if we hold the right mouse button, we can pivot around on the spot. And if we hold the middle mouse wheel, we can pan around. And obviously the left mouse button would be able to click and select objects. The next tab along is the game view. This is a way of playing whatever we've built in Unity in engine. We don't need to build the game to play test it. We can literally play it in the engine. The animator you may or may not have will come to that as we need it in the series. We probably will need it, but it's not important right now. Long story short with that is it controls animations. So the two most important things in this section are the scene and the game. Scene, build the game, game, play the game. Over here we have the inspector panel. And what the inspector panel is, is it gives you detailed information about a game object. And a game object can be pretty much anything in the scene view, whether it is a camera, whether it is a model, whether it is just a cube, that is a game object. And you'll notice as you select different objects, everything on the inspector panel may change, but not everything. You'll notice each one has this transform component. By default, every game object in the scene view has to have a transform component because it has to be told where it is, the position, which way it's facing, the rotation, and also how big it is, which is the scale. Every object needs this. The other things in here, for example, the camera, if we go to directional light, the light, these are known as components. And you can add and remove components from game objects as and when you need to. For example, this directional light has a light component because it needs to be told to shine a light and do all this with its lighting. The camera has a camera component because it needs to be told that this is what you see. This is the game. Now, you're not restricted to what components you can have on game objects, but there is no point having a camera component on a cube if the cube is just a ground. So you've got to be careful of what components are added to what game objects. But we'll go through components more as and when we need to. Down here, we have the project window. And the project window is where you can effectively store all of your assets. And what can assets be? Anything. They can literally be anything in your game. They can be a texture. They can be a material. They could be a model. They could be a script, a sound file. Anything that you use to build your game is an asset. And you store them in folders down here. Make sure you keep everything neat and tidy. The next window along is the console. And the console is a way of debugging and telling you errors that have occurred in your game. For example, we've written some code. There is an error in that code, but we can't figure out what it is. The console will give you an indication of where the error is and what the error is as well, which helps you establish what you can do. Animation tab kind of functions in tandem with the animator tab up here. Again, they're not too important if you don't have them at the moment because we will be working with them a little later on in this series. But effectively, the animation tab is a way of creating quick, simple animations in Unity. So that is a, an overview of the actual engine that we'll be using. This is the default layout. One other thing I do want to show you before we continue further is if we go to File and go to Build Profiles, we can see that currently we are building for Windows. I'm going to continue building for Windows now, even though we're building this for a mobile device, i.e. for example Android, we're going to continue building in Windows. So anything you build for a specific platform can be built and ported to any other supported platform in Unity. So if you do want to build this 
and start with Android, you could effectively port this to PS5 if you have the license. And this is where the other platforms, they didn't appear when we had the option to install Unity. You need licenses to build for PS5 or PS4. Uh, the other ones, it's just because they're not loaded in, so the module doesn't exist. That's why they are greyed out, because these are the only ones I installed. So either way, if you want to switch your platform to Android now, you can. You can effectively select Android and then click on Switch Platform. But I'm going to keep it as Windows for now because before we get to the actual mobile um, game file, we'll be testing it in Windows anyway, and we can port it at the end. So let's carry on as we are. So the last thing we want to do with the interface is have a look how we can actually change this to be more representative of what we're doing. The tabs that we have here can actually be moved around. So if we want this game view to not be there, we can actually drag and drop it over here next to the inspector panel. Or we could drag it and be its own game object in the middle of the screen. We can expand it, make it almost full screen, and we can close it down and we can put it back right there. And it's the same with any tab. We could effectively move the console up here if we wanted to or make it its own object. Let's put it back down here. So because we are going to be building this for mobile devices, we kind of want the aspect and resolution of the game view to be more representative of a mobile device. So let's take this game tab and let's move it over here and snap it to the side there. And let's expand it so it looks like that. Now you can see that, yeah, there are some not problems per se, but things are squeezed down a little bit. You can move things around, change things, squeeze them a bit more. I guess it's entirely up to you how you want to kind of work around this. If you want to work with this same layout as what I've got here, that's absolutely fine. If you want to bring your game view and snap it here and close your hierarchy and build it here, then that's fine. I'm probably going to stick with this view during this series. Final thing we'll do is drop down this navigation and close it down here because we don't want that blocking up too much of the scene view at the moment. So we've got to grips with what all of this means within Unity and what we can use it for. So the key and core component of any game that you build for the first time is based around game objects. What's a game object exactly? Well, for us in this initial tutorial, it's going to be the ground. So let's go to game object, let's go to 3D object, and let's go to cube. You'll notice as soon as you add it in, you'll get something over here in the hierarchy, and it will give you the option to name that cube. I'm going to call this track one. Now the reason I'm calling it track one is because this is going to be a lane that we're going to run down. So we're going to have some like train tracks uh, running along that we can run along in the three different rows. And this is going to be the first row. And if we look at our camera now, we'll start seeing things appear here in the game view. We need to set this position up here as zero and zero. And you can see already our game is taking shape. Yes, it's just a cube, but it is taking shape. Now, what we'll do is we will make this a bit more like what you would expect the track to be. And I'm using my mouse now just to kind of zoom out, pan around with the middle mouse wheel and pivot with the right mouse button. And we'll make this longer. So if you notice, we have a blue arrow here, a red arrow here and a green arrow here. So green represents Y, red represents X and the blue represents Z. So we'll increase the Z axis so it makes it longer. Let's put that as 20. And now at this point, let's imagine we have a train track here and we could be running along this. Well, right now we don't have any player model. We don't have any character. So why don't we actually add some kind of not pre-made assets, but some default assets that we can modify later on. We just need to imagine building this up in blocks and then we can add things later on. So if we go to game object, go to 3D object and go to cube once again. You'll see here in the game view, we have another cube there, but let's set the position to zero, zero, zero once again, and you'll see it does intersect. Next thing you'll want to do is hold down control and then drag the green arrow upwards. And you'll notice that it snaps it up 
by one. So now instead of zero, zero, zero on the position, it's zero, one, zero. So this is going to function primarily as our character that will move. And yes, it is just a cube for now, but all games have to start somewhere. So holding control again, let's move this using the blue arrow and move it backwards towards the camera. And you can see on our game view that it happens all in real time. So let's place the cube here at 0, 1, and negative 7. And if I pan the camera around now and look down, we could imagine this being our character, whether it's a model of somebody running, some train tracks on here and some stone, and then that moving forward. That would be essentially how we start our game going. So what we'll do now is because we didn't name this object before we start playing around with it, the option to rename it has disappeared. So what we can do is on cube, right click, and you can go to rename and we'll put player like so. And at this point, you can see the objects really are taking shape. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit there. And I think this will end up being a little bit longer. But all of this now effectively means that we're starting, even in this first tutorial, putting the game together. And that is the key thing, because next tutorial, what we're going to do is we're actually going to start coding straight away. And honestly, it's a lot easier than what you think. What we'll be doing is we'll be taking this imaginary player character and we'll write a code that will allow it to start moving or start running already so we can see some actual gameplay inside the game. Because if we were to press play now, we'd see absolutely nothing because nothing can move in the game. You have to give Unity a moment sometimes just to kind of uh, build what you have put together. And it doesn't usually take too long. Uh, but effectively, like I say, coding is not too difficult. It's something that we can go through with methods and variables. And honestly, if you ever get stuck with coding, you just take it one line at a time because genuinely it's not that difficult. It slows a lot of people down because they think it is difficult when coding. But honestly, it really, really isn't. So remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload in this series, and I will see you next time.